Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Time for the gems, the Gemini. Gemini. Sign of the air. I call it the breeze because breeze is what Gemini feels like. It's gentle breeze. Air is a gentle breeze. Okay, so esoteric meaning, the relating of the pairs of opposites and building of the antakarana. Antakarana is the first cause, building of the first cause itself by relating of the pair of opposites. This is a dual sign, as you can see, even the Vedic aspects say the same thing as the esoteric aspect, pair of opposites. So it's always dual sign, it's always shifting and moving between two things. That's why it's like air constantly moving breeze. The intelligence that moves things, the intelligence that relates the pairs of things. Keynote for the soul, I see my other self and in the waning of that self, I grow and glow. So, the challenge of the keynote for the soul of Gemini, all my pretty gems, is to see their other self, their other part of themselves. And in the waning of the other self, the shrinking of the other self, I grow. So it's the unification of duality, so to speak. Soul Ray second, the will to unite and illumine. The will to unite and illumine. Soul Mantra is I see the greatest light. Soul color is indigo blue. So this might be good for the gems to people to wear. Indigo blue kind of colored clothes. This is what I see soul colors as, something to wear. This color might be good for you. Vedic aspects, it is rajasic, some energy that moves. It's dual, means it's always will have a flip side to it. Whichever house it falls in will have opposites pushing and pulling. And it's a male sign, that means it wants to go outward. Sign Lord is Mercury, obviously which stands for intelligence, mind, logic and reasoning. Dualistic, <clears throat> air sign, it's all about mental. Exaltation, none, debilitation, none. Its type is Kama. Kama is desire. So, this is the first of the desire signs. Gemini people are highly um, sexually driven because it's a house of Kama. Now, let's see the chart again. So, as you can see here, the third one has come to the head now. Mercury has come to the head. Okay. In the ascendant. So when Mercury comes to the head in the ascendant, what happens? Every house is driven by intelligence, logic and reasoning. Not only that, it becomes dualistic. So you bring duality to each one of these signs in your life. Each of these areas in your life, you bring duality. That means you are shifting and changing your perceptions throughout life. That's your challenge. And you are using logic and reasoning to do that. How does this affect it? Well, first self, personality. The first house, if it is in Mercury, the house of Mercury, which is Gemini, it symbolifies courage. You will be a courageous person. You will be hardworking. You will have ambition, self-sufficiency. You will love travel, enjoyment, curiosity, ability to adapt. Wants to do 10 different things all at once and succeed at all of them. This will be a challenging point for you. 10 different things. I want to do this and that and this and that and succeed at everything. Kind of slow down. You know, Gemini, the air, the breeze, it wants to constantly move. They were constantly talking about themselves. Lots of ideas. Creative intelligence. That's the key word right there. Second house falls in moon. The house of the moon, Cancer. Where Jupiter is exalted. Mass is debilitated. So, what does that mean? How does it affect the family? The second house stands for family, wealth, self-earned wealth, elder siblings. So family life is full of ups and downs. Everything about Gemini is ups and downs because it's a dual sign. It carries that energy everywhere, right? And any sign, any house which is falling under the uh, sign of Cancer always has a lot of fluctuations throughout life. Family life and wealth full of ups and downs in life. Mother is a prominent influence on them. Third sign, third house falls in the sign of Sun, which is Leo. 
and this symbolifies what does third house represent the younger siblings communication friends so the communication because it's son it's ego it's very egoistic dominant communication they always want to say something these people are the ones who will constantly interrupt any conversation because they are dominant they want you to dominate conversations love the spotlight loyal friends non-interfering strong self-confidence you have very strong self-confidence because the intellect is in your head the first house which is Gemini Mercury now whenever you come across any sign all the other planets except moon and Sun have only one house but all the rest of them have at least two houses they own okay so in this case we have Gemini and ascendant so it will always be prominently felt in Virgo because that also is ruled by Mercury which is home and mother now this makes this is a challenging area for them because it's a very calculative matters at home very calculative mother very calculative uh, family maybe business like everything is a transaction give and take how much this is going to cost me should I give it or not is it worth it or not everything has a value attached to it so this becomes very annoying to them that family as it is authoritative calculative in every matter so this is a challenge area for them if you look at gems chart over here Venus is debilitated Mercury is exalted so it all becomes and in the sixth house it's all about calculation okay when we come to Virgo ascendant we will see this because sixth will move into the first so anyway let's get back to this the Fifth house, the house of children, education, romance, creativity. It's got Libra, beautiful sign. So it's got Saturn exalted, Sun debilitated, it's owned by Venus. So what does Venus symbolify? How will that work out? Education, very balanced regarding upbringing of children, their nurturing, education, sports. They will be very liberal also with, uh, with children in these matters of children's education, in the matters of their nurturing giving them the outlook of life. So Gemini mums, uh, if there are female mums who are in um, the sign of Gemini, they will be very liberal kind of people with their children, lucky children. So sixth house of Scorpio, enemies. The sixth house stands for enemies, debts, litigation, daily work, grind, daily routine. How does this affect them? They will have secret enemies in opposition. Why? Sign of Scorpio. Facing a lot of competition at work. Ruled by Mars. It's competition. Sus so they, as a result, they become very suspicious at work. They don't know who their enemies are. Okay. Now the seventh house, the house of spouse, marriage, uh, business partnerships, all everything external to the world. That's why it is opposite the first house. First house is self, seventh house is others. So it's ruled by Jupiter. <clears throat> so the marriage becomes very philosophical because Sag, Jupiter and Sag are very philosophical. Idealistic spouse. Spouse provides them beliefs. Because these people are so dualistic, they go on shifting, waxing and waning between different ideas all the time. Breeze, Gemini. The spouse provides them the belief, wisdom. And they may also change a lot of partners to find exactly what they're looking for, by the way. Gems are very unstable in their relationships because of this. They're looking for someone who understands and listens to them. This becomes a challenge because they're talking all the time and nobody wants to listen. In 8th house, we have Saturn and in the sign of Capricorn. Now, 8th house stands for everything occult, hidden, the sexual life of marriage, occult secrets longevity so saturn will slow down any um, the house of saturn which is capricorn will slow down any activity that it belongs to so as a result these people have a longevity of life they're very controlled and disciplined in communication with their in-laws because saturn gives a discipline eighth house also stands for in-laws ninth house again is the house of saturn but the unorthodox Saturn, in this case Aquarius. So the religious ideas are very independent, very open, very maverick about religion, higher education, explores all fates of interest. They will explore everything, probably believe nothing. But they will go on exploring because Mercury brings that constant need for exploration. Right? 
Then comes the 10th house of career, work, success, fame, which is, which is owned by Pisces. So these kind of people, because they are heavily into communication and they've got open maverick views, they make good te they, teaching, make good uh, profession in the line of teaching, preaching wisdom, communicative type career. They make good teachers, professors, counselors, anything which has to do with a lot of teaching because Pisces is a good teacher and it's in the 10th house. 11th house of social networks, gains, and that's where Aries is. So they will be very highly, they will be using their friends, social networking for gains. Smart businessmen, they make very smart businessmen because they are always saying in their social network and friend circle, even social media now, for money. Who is the one I shall add as a contact on my Facebook? This guy is going to make me money. Only then they will add them. Clever and shrewd in social networks and networking. That's what makes them smart businessmen. In the 12th house, there is Taurus, which is earthly sign ruled by Venus. But this house stands for spirituality. So these people make them visionaries. They make good in art industry. So they get the artistic side of Venus. They bring that into the dreamy world of 12th house. 12th house is very dreamy. They make good directors, painters, artists, higher Venusian connection, right? The higher form, the higher self of Venus would, in spirituality, would be all these things. So this is my general assessment, quick one, of the gems, the Gemini Ascendant people. As usual, you should know the specific planets where they are dumped in your horoscope to know the exact meaning of how this will play out in your life. If you want to know all those details and further consults, check out my Facebook page, Progressive Guidance, and drop in your request, and we can take it from there. Thank you.